tabletop time and in this video I am doing my last project for the cathedral. We've gone through this a couple of times now. You've seen me paint up the cathedral, you've seen me make ivy, stained glass windows and in this video we're going to be exploring graffiti to make it look like it definitely came from the 40k universe. It's tabletop time and in today's video we're going to do some graffiti. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Yeah! So when starting this project off, I knew I needed to do a little bit of research before I got started. Now, I'm no graffiti artist. I've never done it before. So I needed to make sure that what I was going to produce kind of made sense in context into where it was going. I knew a little bit about graffiti, but I didn't know there was so much that goes into it. There's so many different types of styles and methods that I kind of wanted to try them all out. Now, luckily enough, someone on the internet had already made this huge article that went through graffiti graffiti in the 40k universe. It's on a website called Goonhammer and I really recommend checking this website out. There's some really cool ideas and concepts on here and even shows you how to make your own graffiti. And it puts them in context of the 40k universe as well, how they would be used and what they would look like. There was a particular section that talked about cultists, the Imperium and chaos in a general broad sense. This gave me a couple of ideas on the actual wording and themes I wanted to use when creating my graffiti. Once all my research was done, it was time to jump into Photoshop and start designing. In this case, I knew I wanted to try and do a stencil design and a throw up or a wild style design. I think I want to try and use a slogan or a saying instead of trying to cut out a picture. I thought this would work better considering how small I would need to make the image and words just seemed a bit easier to cut out. I found a couple of sayings that I liked. One of my favorites was the emperor neglects, so I knew I had to put this on there somewhere. I picked a couple of typefaces that I thought would work, printed this out on cardboard, and we will come back to that later. While this isn't graffiti, this is something I really want wanted to include in this video and it's making propaganda posters for the terrain. And these are really easy to do in Photoshop, just a couple of filters and some text and they come out small anyway so you don't have to worry about any major errors. I was happy with how these were looking. I made a couple of copies and printed these out ready to go. So you guys have seen me do this probably three or four times now and it's painting up the actual cathedral pieces. I'm not going to go through the method because you guys have seen it before and it's pretty much the same thing. Texture first, spray on top and then dry brushing the very last step. This time around however I chose a couple of terrain pieces that are a bit smaller and flatter. They're not as big and intricate as some of the other pieces I've been working on. I thought for this particular project this would work really well for graffiti. I had big flat areas that I could use to put the graffiti on. Also luckily enough for this particular set of terrain there was only one window this time. my terrain pieces dry overnight and they're looking pretty good and I think that I'm ready to start actually putting some graffiti on these. So I've got three different methods that I want to try out. One is using stencils, the other is using transfers and the last is hand painting. So let's go through each method and I'm going to share my thoughts and feelings as we go along. <laughs> The first method that I thought would be the easiest was doing a stencil. So I spent a good hour trying to cut out each of these words and it was a lot more tedious than I thought it would be. It probably doesn't help that I realized towards the end that my blade actually didn't have a tip to it. So I was probably making it way harder for myself than I needed to, but that's fine. It all got done in the end. with these stencils I found the areas that I thought they would look the most effective. The Emperor Neglects I put on the side of the cathedral where there was a nice flat area and the Alfarius Lives I put on the floor of one of the terrain pieces. With the Emperor Neglects one I wanted to try aerosol spraying this one to see how it would come out. So carefully using masking tape I made sure to cover most of the areas to ensure there was no spray back. And then I went outside and sprayed this with a red aerosol and waited for it to dry.
Alfarius Live Stencil, I decided to try and sponge this on instead of spraying it. I really wanted to see what the effect would look like instead. Using the sponge felt like it gave me more control. I could actually pick where I wanted the paint to sit. And this stencil was a little bit flimsy as well, so I needed to be delicate with it. Once this was dry, it was time to pull them off and reveal what I had done. The red one is actually not super bad. Some of the letters are legible, um, some of them aren't, but you kind of know what the word is anyway. I've got a little bit of overspray. I wanted a little bit to make it look like a stencil, but that's kind of in a really weird place. So I'm gonna paint over that and fix it up and maybe even touch up the letters just a little bit. But I'm actually kind of happy with how that turned out. I thought the spray would not work as well as the sponge. And the sponge didn't really work out at all. That just looks like chicken scratch. It's awful. Moving forward and making the actual terrain, I probably will use aerosol cans uh, if I want to make any stencils. So I'm really happy with that. So the next method we're going to use is transfer sheets. <laughs> So these ones are from Green Stuff World that I ordered a while ago and they were probably the best ones for the style that I was after. I really wanted to get some that were this awesome wild style. Some of these are really colorful and bright, which is gonna be awesome against the cathedral. While I've got some other ones as well that are just some simple sort of words. They're nothing too exciting. Follow me along and hopefully uh, they come out looking really good. After looking at a couple of these stencils, I really loved this balloon style one at the bottom. It was huge, but I thought that the color was really pretty and I wanted to try and use this. There was another decal I really liked as well. This awesome wild style one that was in more darker colors, I really liked. And I also found a spray one as well that I thought I would chuck on and just see how it turned up. If you've never used decals before, these are pretty easy to use. All you need is just a little container of water to chuck your decal in once you've cut it up. While I was waiting for my transfer in the water, I used Vallejo's Decal Softer and Decal Fix on the terrain. Putting down the fixer first so the decal would adhere to the terrain and the softer on top to, well, soften the decal. So ideally your decal should be able to slide off from the paper that it's adhered to. And once it's off, you place it onto the terrain or whatever it is that you're using. And decals are pretty fragile as well. So you need to be super careful when you're pulling them off and adhering them to certain pieces. In this case, my smaller decals actually went on completely fine, but this large balloon one was a huge pain in the ass. Not only did I need to pull it off of the decal without it wrapping over itself, I needed to adhere it to the terrain so that it would stick there while I tried to get the rest of it on. I also needed to make sure it was sitting on there properly, not overlapping in these really weird places. In hindsight, I would have liked to have put this somewhere else, but because it was so big, this little flat area at the bottom of this terrain was probably the only place it was gonna sit nicely enough. But with all my hard work, it did end up sitting and I was really happy with it. In order for these decals to lay flat and adhere to the terrain, I applied some softer on top and it just left this completely alone. <laughs> for the first couple of minutes, I was making sure my decals were adhering to the terrain and sitting nicely. I decided to go ahead and start doing my posters. Now these I just printed out on normal computer paper and cut them up into little tiny posters. Using a mixture of Mod Podge and water, I simply mix these together and then put the posters on the terrain, giving them a nice thick layer of the concoction I just made up. a couple of them to try and cover up that Alfarius Lives graffiti. I didn't want to get rid of it completely, but I definitely wanted to try and mask a lot of it up. And in the end, I'm actually really happy with how this turned out. After waiting 24 hours, it was time to go back and have a look at my decals. And they were looking pretty good. They lay down perfectly and they were dry. However, they were looking a little too clean, a little too perfect. We needed to weather these babies up. So to weather these up, I just dry brushed on the same gray I had used for the terrain and a couple of weathering pigments as well to dirty them up. And that is the decal method all done. Now I'm pretty happy with how these turned out. Would I use them again? Mm, I don't know. I think I'd like to actually make some of my own completely from scratch and get them printed. But what do you guys think? Do you think that would be a cool video idea for us to try and make our own custom transfers and to get them printed? Let us know in the comments below.
And now we're on to the very last method, which was hand painting. And I was absolutely terrified. I'd made this awesome design on the computer and it was time to transfer this over onto the terrain. The first thing I did was draw out the design in pencil first. So I knew what I was working with and wasn't going in completely blind. This gave me room for errors and to fix up any mistakes that I had made. When it came to actually painting the graffiti, I had to work back to front. So I had to start with the background colors first before moving on to the colors that would lay on front. So I just followed along with the colors and the design I had done on the computer, which I had next to me as reference. working back and forth with the different colors and the design, I was really happy with the effort that I put in and this is the final result. That's it, that is my three different methods, all trialed and tested. I gotta say, I have a few favorites and ones that I don't particularly like. My particular favorites are definitely using the stencils with the aerosol cans and doing it hand painted as well. But I highly recommend doing a bit of research and trying to find what style you wanna incorporate if you choose to do this. So with all that said and done, I'm gonna go ahead and paint the rest of this terrain using the methods that I loved the most. So that is all it for our cathedral build using graffiti this time. and. When we're pretty much all done. It is time to build our kill team board, but I'm gonna need some help. So I'm gonna need a Dave. Ah! Pointed in the wrong direction, but that's all right. <laughs> I'm gonna need a Murray. Where's Murray? Well, there is desperate claw marks. Huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I just moved into a new place with my partner. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's going great. Yeah. Nah, nah, they, they don't talk much. They just do a lot of cleaning, you know. Yeah. Nah, nah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, nah. They're, they're really into, you know, the old sleep mode sort of thing. Yeah. Nah, I'll see you later. Yeah. I'll see you soon. <clears throat> Oh, that's so good. Oh, yeah. Oh, low angle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now spray paint some air while you're doing it. With my dirty. Oh, ready? Yeah. Spray that way. You're spraying in your own face. I know.